Man's gonna add to item number two.
Amen. Yes, September. Amen. One of my first impressions was how friendly and courteous the Ghanaian people are. Amen. You are a special people for the Lord. Amen. So Ella Nielsen, after serving in uh, Africa, he then went and became, uh, actually became a uh, later executive secretary of that division and he was there until 1990. And following his uh, post in West Africa, he served as in Silver Springs, Maryland uh, as associate secretary and he also served in the Euro Asia division in Moscow. So he speaks not only English, he speaks French, and he also speaks some Russian. Amen? Amen. So we thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Wilson, after that, he came back to the United States. And he served as president of the Review and Herald Publishing Association. And until his election as the Adventist World Church Vice President, in 20, 2000, more specifically. And I believe it was in 2010, since 2010, he's been our beloved, most, and I mean it, folks, beloved, General Conference President. Amen. For me personally, what has always impressed me with Elder Wilson is that he is indeed a man of God. He is a man whose love for this church is obvious. He loves this church. He loves the Seventh-day Adventist church. He loves the spirit of prophecy. Amen. 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 You can do better than that. Amen. Amen. He is always reminding us that the spirit of prophecy and Sister White's ministry is an eternal blessing for this church. So thank you, Elder, for reminding us of to that and for staying true to the principle of the church. Of course, he is a doctor. He has a doctor, doctoral degree. And uh, but guess what? Above all of that, yes, he is a good husband. Yes, he is a great grandfather. Yes, he is a doctor, he, but above all, he is a servant of the Almighty God. Usually, when you introduce a president, you don't say all of that. You, when they introduce the president of the U.S., they just say, ladies and gentlemen, the president of the United States of America. But I believe this man's office is no lower, in fact, higher yes. than the office of the president yes. of uh, the United States. Yes. Because he is the president of the Church of the Most High. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my distinguished honor to introduce to you, and now I will say, ladies and gentlemen, the president of the General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Yes. Even though it has been emphasized through the day, I just want to say that this is a beautiful edifice. Tonight. I pray that God will continue to visit this church as you continue to advance the kingdom of God here at the Bronx. I'll now call on the ceremonial choir, anniversary choir, to bring us the theme song.
kwamba Mambo aha What a privilege to be with you today I wish I could keep going in Sri or Ga or Ebe or many of the other languages but what a privilege to be with you today here in New York City for this amazing, I'm not going to call it culmination, but event that will propel you into even greater mission in New York City for the Lord. That is why you are here, that is why this event is taking place. You see so many individuals here who have such an intense interest in God's church and in the first Ghana Seventh-day Adventist Church in New York, this warms my heart. In fact, I have to tell you, I do this not to make you feel good and not in any way to build you up humanly speaking, but I want to tell you something. In the power and grace of Jesus Christ, and to Him be the glory, I am proud of you. Amen. You have shown yourselves to be God's people. People no matter where you are. And you know, the, the Ghanaian diaspora is all over the place. We heard some wonderful reports from different churches, different places bringing greetings, bringing offerings, bringing assistance. But I want to tell you, you are placed here in New York for a specific purpose. And that is to point people to Jesus, to His righteousness, to His righteousness, to His three angels' messages, and to His soon second coming. What a privilege for all of us as Seventh-day Adventists to be part of this worldwide family. Thank you to Pastor Omalir for his introduction, for his reception in the Atlantic region. Uh, this is my, yeah, salute. Uh, Pastor Char Sharpenberg and I started our ministry together here in the Great New York Conference. And that was a few years ago. And Pastor Sharpenberg is still with you. And he's helping you in a very wonderful way. And Pastor Smith, thank you for uh, seeing us here in the wonderful Great New York Conference. Thank you for what you and your team are doing to bring about a proclamation of God's wonderful truth to the people of New York. And I must say, uh, we are honored to have traditional leaders with us today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your uh, presence, for the beautiful regalia. Uh, and thank you for that beautiful song. The song was wonderful. And my wife, Nancy, and I have great privilege. Uh, I think it was about three and a half years ago uh, to visit the Asante King. And it was a great privilege to be in his presence, to talk with him. Uh, he spoke through an interpreter, as he normally does. But then when we got up close, then he spoke to us in good English. <laughs> and it was such a privilege to meet him. I have to tell you also, I should have brought it with me, I don't know why I didn't think of it, but my father also, while he was president of the General Conference, uh, met a previous Asantehini, and that Asantehini gave him an amazing symbolic gift, one which I have in my possession, my father is sleeping in Jesus, waiting for the Lord's return, so is my mother. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, Jesus is coming soon. 
And uh, this is something he gave a beautiful symbol, which I value. You know, some things you will pass along to other people, you will leave them in your office, or you will give them to people. But this is one thing I'm going to keep. And it was, uh, it was a, an arm from the elbow on up. You may have seen it, where there is an egg in the hand. And it's something he explained to my father, and I have accepted this great counsel also. The arm and the hand represents authority, responsibility, leadership. The egg represents the people you are serving. If you are too hard on them, you will crush them. If you are not attentive enough, the egg will slip out of your hand and break. So as leaders in the Atlantic Union, the Red Art Conference, our treasurer from the Columbia Union, others who are here from various places, let us always look to God as leaders and remember who we are and that we are in some way representing our Lord and Savior to be careful with people, to love people, and to share with people, not bringing strong authoritarian pressure or being so laid back that we don't care, no, we apply the appropriate attention to our people. And that can only happen as each of us know Jesus. You know, this uh, special honor that you have given to many people is uh, a special honor. And Pastor, this is a significant, significant plaque. This is not something you just, you know, toss around. This has some real weight to it. But I want to tell you, everything that any of us as leaders have done must never point to us. It must always point to God and give Him the glory. Amen. And that, Pastor Boateng, is what you are doing in this event. I'm very grateful to you for the privilege of being here, the privilege of receiving your hospitality, the amazing tour that you took us on earlier today, where we toured this building. You have done an exceptional job. Praise be to God. This is truly, as our counselor from the Ghanaian consulate indicated, and he had to slip out and pay his respects. We're very grateful he was here. Uh, he indicated, you know, this is, you, you've gone beyond the magic. And he praised God for that. Going down into the lower level. Pastor Boateng was calling it the basement, but it looks amazing. And I think we're going to eat down there, probably. That's what it looks like. What an amazing building you have provided, not only for worship, but to tell the people of New York, this is in the honor of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yeah. Always point to Jesus. Always point to our Lord and Savior. Pastor Boateng, I want to thank you for the special garment you have provided for Nancy and for me today. I actually like it much better than wearing a tie. <laughs> this is true West African outfit. In fact, I'm going to wear this to my office at the General Conference. <laughs> now, you know, it's interesting. In the program, it says here, Divine Service, 11 o'clock to 9 <laughs> Now, it's about two minutes, about two minutes after.
chapter 2. But I want to tell you, having lived in West Africa for nine years, <laughs> and let me tell you, Nancy and I would not trade that experience for anything. The people of West Africa are in our house. We love the people of West Africa. We love the people of God. We're privileged to be with you. But having lived there for about nine years, uh, you and I know that time is not the most important thing. <laughs> the most important thing is the event. So let's forget about the time. <laughs> because I do have a bigger message I want to share with you. You know, what a privilege to be with you. Um, I am very sorry that Pastor will not have been out there tonight. I will find out more about the situation from Pastor Boateng and others, and probably try to call him. It was a few months ago that I received the call telephone call from Pastor Bediaco, from Ghana. And he was asking me if I would come to New York City and be at this very special event. How could I refuse, first of all, a longtime friend, Matthew Bediaco, when I worked in what was then known as the Africa Indian Ocean Division, now known as West Central Africa Division. Professor Beniaco was the president of the West African Union. That included Ghana, Gambia, Sierra Leone, and Liberia. Ghana has, since that time, became the Ghana Union, and now we have two unions. What an amazing growth in Ghana. We praise God. And they export many people around the world like you who start other churches. I want to tell you, I am so grateful for what God does through Ghanaian people all over the world. Because you are faithful to the Word of God. You are faithful to the spirit of prophecy. You are faithful to your Lord and Savior. You are serious people. Well, you have fun too. But. If you're serious about your relationship with the Lord. And I'm very grateful. But Pastor Benyako was union president uh, of the West African Union. And Pastor Kuma, you were also president of the West African Union at one time. Senator Bonacarma, okay. Well, in any case, uh, what a privilege to, to see Pastor Kuma again. And uh, Pastor Brempong, you uh, you were president, or we call the vice chancellor of the Adventist University of Africa uh, for a number of years. You know what a privilege to to be together as a family, a worldwide family. But Pastor Bediako was laboring with me to be here today. How could I refuse him? How could I refuse coming to New York City? Because it does have a huge draw for me. Ever since I worked in this place, I've had a great burden for the big cities of the world. And God will continue to place that on your hearts as well. To touch the lives of people. And to come to the Greater New York Conference, where I started my ministry. Thank you, Pastor Smith, for your guidance of this conference and your sister conference, the Northeastern Conference in this region. What a privilege to work together for the wonderful glory of God. I spent um, a number of days, just a few days ago, with the current president of the West Central Africa Division. That's the Robert Ose Bonsu. And I want to tell you, Pastor Ose Bonsu is doing an excellent work. Yeah. He is, of course, as you know, from Ghana. And 
he is carrying out his responsibilities along with his two fellow officers in a wonderful way, helping our people to focus on evangelism, to focus on the real important things in life. But Jesus is coming soon. And I told him I would be here. In fact, he told me that his mother, Rose Osei Bonsu, he is a member of this church. Now, Sister Rose, are you here? Praise God. I have to tell you, I have seen your son more recently than you have. <laughs> Thank you so much. What a privilege to, to see you. Um, I have some sad news which many of you have heard. Some colleagues, a uh, number of us, worked with him. Pastor Jacob Norby, who was the president of the division, African and Ocean Division at that time, and uh, worked in many other responsibilities. Pastor Norby recently, in the last few days, died. And that was a real shock to me. Just yesterday, as we were traveling up here, I called his daughter Sue, and spoke with her, had prayer with her. Uh, Pastor Norty's wife, Thelma, of course, died a few years ago, not too long ago. And uh, it was a privilege also to visit their home when we were in Ghana about three, three and a half years ago. Also, uh, some of you may remember or know uh, Pastor Ebenezer Aboka. He also passed away recently, and that was a real shock as well. I want you to pray for these families and so many others, those who are left. But we do not go through life without hope. For Jesus is coming, and that trumpet sound will sound and bring those back to life who have died in Jesus. What a privilege to be part of this amazing work for the Lord. The Sabbath school this morning, some of you may not have heard that, but I am very grateful that the focus was on the Sabbath school lesson, which is the three angels' messages, and the wonderful opportunity for us to share the messages of Revelation 14 and Revelation 18, calling people back to the true worship of God. And uh, it just was a, a privilege to hear Pastor Cody and his very fine presentation in PowerPoint about the need to stay on God's side and to receive the seal of the living God, which is the keeping of the seventh-day Sabbath, as opposed to the mark of the beast, which is the keeping of the first day of the week. May you, many of you who are from, especially the Ashanti people group, you know that the seventh-day Sabbath has special meaning. And you of all people here in this great city, and proclaim the precious three angels' messages with great power. What a privilege to be part of God's great outward reach to the world. Now, I asked for another envelope because I turned one in already for Nancy and for me. And we are personally going to participate in helping you. Yeah. It's a modest amount, but it is an amount, and I will be sending it through the appropriate channels for that. But also, I got this to remind me that the General Conference will also uh, assist in some modest way. Yeah. Uh, I heard some of the figures that were provided, and that was amazing. But we will also participate to assist you in helping to make this a secure place for the message of God's 
last day movement to be proclaimed with absolute Holy Spirit power. I want you to know that Mission to the Saints wants you to participate in a wonderful way. And using all of your talents, amazing talents, those young people who are up here who are so brilliant in the scriptures, praise God for those young people. And I'm glad you provided a special assistance to them to head to the Pathfinder Camporee. That would be a wonderful thing. Young people providing this. Community services, your outreach. I even saw a freezer downstairs that is dedicated to helping to feed the people of this community. Thank you for doing this. Music, choir, what a beautiful, powerful force you are for this church. Those of you playing the keyboard and the organ, those of you singing, soloists, all of you combined together, giving God glory through your talents and voices. Never sing to your own glory, always to the glory of God. You see, God wants to make the first Ghana Seventh-day Adventist Church, and I understand in the city there are approximately, between Greater New York Conference and Northeastern Conference, approximately six or seven set Ghanaian churches or companies or whatever. And I praise God for that. You are part of an amazing opportunity to bring a center of influence, as Ellen White indicates, to the city of New York. He wants, God wants to use you in a powerful way as he already has. He wants to use you in an even greater way. You see, God is so good to us. O Nyamiye, O Nyamiye, O Nyamiye Mami. What a privilege to be part of this movement that God has provided. God does not want you to take your eyes off of the goal. Now that's going to be the theme of my message from Scripture. Don't get this. Don't get distracted. Don't let anything take your eyes off of the real mission of why you are a Seventh Day Adventist. Don't let work difficulties, don't let economic situations, don't let interpersonal disruptions, don't let political things, don't let anything remove your focus on Jesus and the true mission of this church. The Seventh-day Adventist Church has been called for a particular purpose, a particular reason. In the book of Philippians, Chapter 3, in verses 13 and 14, Paul, the amazing apostle of the Lord, the apostle who went through so much difficulty, never lost sight of why he was called. And you know how he was called on that road to Damascus, where he was intending to imprison and to persecute Christians, and Jesus met him on that road. I hope all of you have had a Damascus Road experience, that you have a daily walk with Jesus. Well, that amazing apostle said in verses 13 and 14 of Philippians 3, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Now, we had a beautiful rendition. I really can't... Uh, go on without thanking those who have participated in helping us remember the beginnings of this church. The video and the PowerPoint that was presented to us. Amazing and wonderful opportunity to remember. And I did take note in the presentation and also 
in the accounting in this beautiful book that has been produced of a time, a period where you lost $375,000. I was happy to read and to hear that that did not block you and disintegrate you. You felt badly, <clears throat> you felt cheated, but you moved ahead in God's grace. Amen. So Paul is saying, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press for the goal, for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. God has called all of you to a special mission, a special purpose. In the book, Testimonies for the Church, and volume 9, page 19, it says here, in a special sense, Seventh-day Adventists have been set in the world, can I also say in New York City, or in Ghana, or wherever you may be. In fact, I'm sure this is being live streamed. Wherever you are right now, God has called you. It says here, they have been set in the world as watchmen and light bearers. To, it doesn't say just pastors or evangelists or church officers. Every Seventh-day Adventist. To them has been entrusted the last warning for a perishing world. On them is shining wonderful light from the Word of God. They have been given a work of the most solemn import, the proclamation of the first, second, and third angel's messages. There is no other work of so great importance. They are to allow nothing else to absorb their attention. God has placed us on this earth for a purpose. He has placed this beautifully renovated uh, building for a purpose. To reach the people of this community, of this nation, of this uh, city, the great city of New York. You see, God is calling each of you to focus upon Christ and His righteousness. Focus upon what God has in store for you to accomplish. In the book, The Great Controversy, it tells us on page 488, and I hope you are participating in distributing that wonderful book, The Great Controversy. Uh, this year, and next year, and now we're going to extend it one more year, it is the Missionary Book of the Year. Thousands of people have come to a knowledge of Jesus because of reading that book. It is such a magnificent account of how God has dealt with his people from the early Christian church down through the future time in which we are now entering. It says here on page 48, Satan invents unnumbered schemes to occupy our minds that they may not dwell upon the very work with which we ought to be best acquainted. So the devil is after all of us to occupy our minds with something else than the goal. The arch deceiver, Satan, hates the great truths that bring to view an atoning sacrifice and an all-powerful mediator, Jesus Christ, our Lord and High Priest. He knows that with him, everything depends, this is with the devil, he knows that everything depends on his diverting minds from Jesus and his truth. Those who would share the benefits of the Savior's mediation should permit nothing to interfere with their duty to perfect holiness in the fear of God. God wants us to keep our eyes focused upon Him and the purpose for this beautiful sanctuary and this first Ghana church here in New York. God is calling for us to be powerful witnesses for Him. I'd like you to turn, if you have your Bibles, to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 
I want to briefly look at that beautiful passage, a passage that my wife read to us, beginning in verse 24. And as she read those verses, I would imagine you were imagining in your mind this race that we are running. You see, it says here, Paul is saying, don't you know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Now, the Apostle Paul was obviously referring to what is called the Isthmian Games, which are the precursor, they were the precursor to the Olympic Games, to where people train diligently, very rigidly, in order to win, and they must keep their eye on the goal at all times. It says here in verse 24, these people run in such a way that you may obtain this prize. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it for, do it to obtain a perishable crown. What happened when a runner in those Isthmian games in the country of Greece, when they were competing against such intensity, sometimes those runners fell to the ground and died. They put in such effort. And what was the result? They would give them, the one who was the winner, would get a crown of leaves. They would also probably take them to their home city and they would cut out a new gate to the city and name it after that person. But after a few days, a few weeks, what does the crown of leaves look like? It fades. It dies. And after a few years, people will come by and say, Oh, I see this gate is named after so-and-so, but who is that? You see, things here on this earth are perishable. Paul says, we run in something, he continues in that verse, we run for an imperishable crown. What a privilege it will be to get to heaven and Jesus will take that crown of gold and place it upon your head with stars in the crown representing those that you have led to the foot of the cross. And we will take off those crowns because gold, and I know in the, especially in Ghana, gold is important, but gold in heaven will be so plentiful even the streets will be paved with gold. Amen. So the crowns will mean nothing to us except that God placed it on our head, Christ placed it on our brow. We will take those crowns off and throw them at the feet of Jesus and say, heaven was cheap enough to give my life, to give my all for Jesus. That's the imperishable crown. Paul goes on to say, therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. You know, in the Olympic Games, they have all kinds of different events. When you're running, you don't just kind of run along as if you were going to a pick. No, you run with intensity. Those of you who have run in school activities and competitions, you know that you must keep your eyes on the goal, on the final line, and never even turn around for two seconds to see if someone is gaining on you, because you will lose the race. You will lose time. So Paul is saying, let us run with intensity. Let us not be like a boxer. Now, I'm not a boxer, and it's a pretty mean kind of sport. But when you're boxing, you don't just kind of throw your arms in the air. You make every punch count. So Paul is trying to say, let us understand what our true role is in trying to accomplish our task. And then he says, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. I bring it into an understanding. 
I bring it into a complete correction of my wonderful relationship with the Lord because I don't want to have preached to other people and then in the final event I disqualify myself. And as you think about the Apostle Paul, shipwrecked, beaten, left for dead, put in prisons and dungeons, and finally beheaded for Jesus. Paul, of all people, shows us what it meant to keep your eye on God and his mission. What a privilege it is for us to understand this beautiful and wonderful privilege. Now I want to just share a, a few other quotations with you very briefly uh, from Testimony Volume 9, which occupied in controversies among themselves. Now that's the book thing. I hope that in your board meetings and in your activities here at the church, that you don't get into too many controversies that keep your people away from the real goal. God wants us to be clear from controversies, but that's Satan's objective. Satan knows that if they do not watch, the day of the Lord will come on them as a thief in the night. Keep your eyes on the goal. Again, from Testimonies, Volume 9, page 188. Strive earnestly for unity. Pray for it. Work for it. Crucify self. Esteem others better than yourself. You know, the greatest challenge that the Seventh-day Adventist Church faces is not the lack of religious liberty. It is not some terrible persecution that will come in the future. It is not some nuclear holocaust that may eventuate. The greatest challenge the Seventh-day Adventist Church faces is self and pride. Yes. When we would put away pride, we are told, most things can be solved in just a few minutes. Yes. God is calling for us to keep our eyes on the goal and not be distracted in any, any other way. And then one final quotation here from volume nine of the Testimonies, page 187. We have no right to keep our minds stayed on ourselves, our preferences and our fancies. We are not to seek to maintain a peculiar identity of our own a personality, an individuality which will separate us from our fellow neighbors. My dear church members here in the first Ghana Seventh-day Adventist Church, as we celebrate this amazing journey that you have been on, may you realize that this race, this journey, is one in which the devil is trying to distract you from looking towards the final goal of what he wants you to do here. Pastor Boateng, I want to thank you that you mentioned earlier in the service that you want to be participating in mission to the cities, in helping the world church to reach its objectives. I also read in this beautiful brochure that was produced the vision that has kept us focused that this place, this church, number one, be a home for all who are seeking a genuine place of worship. Number two, a house of refuge for all Ghanaians in New York. What a beautiful theme you have. Number three, a safe hit for our children against the violent moral and social storms of our day. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, we are facing a cultural challenge to the moral aspects of the Bible like never before. Let us understand fully and completely that we should love and respect all people. But the Bible gives us clear instruction and understanding that marriage is between one man and one woman. That aberrations of human sexuality are not in God's plan. But we are not here to bash people. 
We are not here to hurt people. We are here to point people to the Word of God Amen. and to what God can do as 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 tells us. If you are in Christ, you are a new creature. All things are passed away. All things become new. God is calling on you to help your young people. I, I applaud you for putting this in, a safe haven for our children against the violent, moral, and social storms of our day. And number four, a repository of distinctive Adventist heritage, heritage and authentic Ghanaian African culture. God will bless you in these objectives. And then, a little further on, it says here, we hope to accelerate the work of evangelism and stewardship. Praise God that you are part of this last day Advent movement. Don't let the devil in any way distract you from the goal of preaching his word and bringing people to the foot of the cross, pointing them to Jesus soon, soon coming. The story is told about a hunter. Now, I'm not a hunter. I, um, the strongest gun I have is a BB gun. Some of you know what that is. I'm not a hunter, but you know, in many parts of the world, and on the continent of Africa, hunting is important for the village. Well, the chief hunter of this village was getting older. He knew he needed to find another chief hunter. So he looked through the village and he found three promising young men. Strong, bright, diligent, with a mentality to be a leader. He said, now, young men, I'm going to give you a test in a little while. One of you will be the chief hunter, but you must listen to my instruction. Yes. Yes, sir. No problem. We, we're here. No, no, no difficulty at all. When you are looking at your prey, when you are looking at that which you are hunting, you must always keep your eye on the eye of the animal. You understand that? Yes. Oh, yes, yes. No, we understand. No problem. We will we, do it. All right. After a few days, he called these three promising young men to the examination. He said, come with me. So they proceeded into the forest into the jungle. They came to a clearing, enough space in order to carry out the test. And there was a beautiful big tree, and in the tree was a bird. Now again, I don't profess to be a hunter, and I'm not advocating hunting birds, but this was what the hunter did. So he said, first young man, Take your rifle. You see that bird up in the tree? The young man said, yes sir, yes, I, I, I see that. I see that bird. Well, what do, you, what do you see? I see the eye of the bird. Fantastic, you have listened to my counsel. Wonderful. But you know what? I know you're very bright, you're a young person, I'm older, but you're younger, you don't. Know, you don't even need glasses. You can see things really well. But what else do you see? Oh, yeah, I, I, I see some branches in the tree. Oh, you, you have good eyesight. That's great. Do you see anything else? Oh, well, yeah, I see some, some leaves in the tree. Young man, put your gun down. Second young man. Point your gun. What do you see, young man? Oh, I see the eye of the bird. Excellent. You two have listened well. But you know, I, I understand you have a great expanse of vision. Do you see anything else in the tree? Wow, yeah. No, I see clouds beyond the tree. Oh, your vision is really good. Excellent. Do you see anything else? 
Yes, I see a monkey in the tree. Put your gun down. Yes. Third young man. Young man, what do you see? I see the eye of the bird. Excellent, young man, you have done well. But you also have great eyesight. I know that, I've watched you. What else do you see? I see the eye of the bird. Young man, don't, don't mess with me. You already told me that. I want to know what else do you see? I see the eye of the bird. Fire your gun, young man. You are the chief of My brothers and sisters here in First John of Church here in New York. Never take your eyes off of Jesus Christ. Never take your eyes off of this precious word. Never take your eyes off the mission God has given Seventh-day Adventists to proclaim the three angels' messages and the fourth angel's message of Revelation 18, calling people out of Babylon and confusion and calling them to the pure worship of God. Don't ever take your eyes off of the Lord in prayer and in humble supplication to Him. Don't ever take your eyes off of witnessing and sharing with others here in New York City. God has a purpose for you. The reason for this beautiful edifice is not simply to come every Sabbath and say, wow, look what we have done. It is to say, how can we best use this for the mission of the church? How can we point people to Jesus? Because one day, very soon, in the eastern sky, we are going to see a small cloud appear, rather dark in color, about half the size of a man's hand. It will be seen by everyone, whether they are in Accra, in Kumasi, in uh, in Lagos, in Los Angeles, in Buenos Aires, in Paris, in New York, every eye will see him at the same time. Yeah. And I can guarantee you on that day it will not be a cloudy day. It will not be raining. Praise God that he saved us this morning a bit and we're outside. It will be a clear day. Everyone will see it. And that cloud will get brighter and brighter and larger and larger, filling the entire sky. Millions of angels poured out for that great event. And our eyes will be drawn to the very center of that cloud. And we will look and we will see Jesus. And we will say, Lo, this is the God we have waited for. He will save us. And Jesus will say, well done, good and faithful servants. Enter into the joy of your Lord. And we will rise off this earth after those who have been gathered from their death sleep. They will be awakened in the Lord and rise first. And then we who are alive will rise after them to ever be with the Lord. I want to tell you that the real purpose for this church. It's the real purpose for you as an individual. It's the real aim. It is the final race that you are running. God says, keep your eye on Him and upon the final goal. How many of you today would like to say to the Lord, Lord, I'm here. I want to be used by you. Yes, Lord, I will go. I want to be part of that great group that brings people to the foot of the cross and is waiting for your soon coming. If you'd like to be there that day when Jesus comes and look up and say, this is the God we have waited for, would you just stand to your feet right there? Amen. Amen. I want to ask you one, one more question before we pray. A prayer of consecration for you and for your work here in the Bronx and throughout New York City. And by extension to Ghana and elsewhere. How many of you this year 
2023. You want to ask the Lord to help you to find at least one other person this year to bring to the foot of the cross that you won't allow anything to keep you from that precious goal of knowing Jesus and introducing Jesus to somebody else. How many of you would like to say, Lord, help me to find one more person at least this year? Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we bow our heads before you in this beautifully finished church. It has been four plus years since people have been able to worship here in joy and in a beautiful setting of excitement. Lord, we ask that now this particular point of the journey of the first Ghana Seventh-day Adventist Church here in the Bronx will not be the ending point for this church, but that it will be an amazing jump start to that which you have in mind for this church to accomplish in New York City. To bring to people the wonderful message that God loves them, that God has a plan for their lives, and that Jesus is coming soon. Lord, help each one who has raised his or her hand today to be led to someone this year to bring them into the precious truth. We know that you're coming very soon. We know that you're going to send the latter rain of the Holy Spirit. And when that happens, this work will go through New York, through the Atlantic Union, through the entire country, yes, through the entire world, like fire in the stuff. Lord, we look forward to that time. And until that time, help each one of us to say, yes, Lord, I will go. I will be part of total member involvement. Everyone doing something for Jesus. Lord, bless this church. Bless each individual. Bless each outreach activity. And may all be done to the glory of God. And Lord, help us never to be distracted from the ultimate goal of seeing Jesus and his soon second coming. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Please be seated. Come on, 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 ye sundowns the <laughs> We are starting working in the community just tomorrow morning. We are going to have a program. 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 We are going to 
young people are going to keep their family.